Welcome to Wisdom on the Front Porch. We have another great episode for you with Yara. And I didn't say that right. It's Yara. Yeah. I'll get, get, get that roll on my arse here. <laughs> uh, I really thank you for being here. And I thank you, our audience, for being here, too, because you're the reason we're here. So, uh, Yara, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your business is? Yes. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to your space. Uh, it's an honor and you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who am I? So I am an international best-selling author, award-winning author and speaker, financial consultant, owner and CEO of BCS, Bookkeeping Consultant Services, where we specialize on financial management services for nonprofit organizations, as well as financial planning for individuals. I've been doing this for about 15 years now, and we help our clients with pretty much all that financial management entails concerning nonprofits, you know, the managing the books, you know, book, monthly bookkeeping, catch up clean at work if the books are behind, grant tracking, budgeting, audit support, and, and all of that good stuff. And in regards to financial planning for individuals, we provide budgeting consultant services. It's, it's pretty much creating a strategic budgeting plan so they can make the most out of their income and systematically come out of debt so they can reach their their financial goals. So that's that's pretty much the bulk of, of what BCS is and who who we serve. <laughs> yeah. So, man, you just cover it all. That's good. Ah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, so let's find out a little bit more about the business side so we can help other entrepreneurs out there or that are either starting out or those that have their business and they need this financial help. So how did you get into this line of work? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, choosing my career, it mainly comes from, from my childhood. And yes, I always liked numbers. I always liked my math classes growing up. And I always ended up somehow, some way being uh, the one managing the money, whatever event or group I was in. <laughs> You know, back in school, I was like, volunteer, is that how you say it? They yeah. would just put me out there. Yeah, I will take care of it. <laughs> there you go. But the main reason comes from seeing powerful role, the powerful role that financial stability played in people's lives, especially my fam you know, family members and close friends, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, always in survival mode seeking for help in, in, in the community and more often than not, not being able to get the help that we're looking for that they needed, desperately needed. I really saw a lot of people really struggle and like I said, living always in survival mo mode. So choosing nonprofits as, as my niche ties up to that. And okay. I've always had a heart for helping people in fact, at first, when I came out of high, high school, going to, into college, I was going to go for social worker, but it just didn't happen. Um, and I went the accounting route instead. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so choosing nonprofits at my niche comes from, from my childhood because of the struggles and the challenges I saw them go through and not being able to get help. And these organizations are often the lifeline for communities in need. Right. And but without proper financial management, their ability to help gets compromised. Right. And so I wanted to help others, especially organizations that are doing incredible work for their communities uh, out there, putting, you know, the sweat out there is helping their communities that they are really in need, but often struggle to manage their finances and keep them straight. Right. Because nonprofits relied on their funding and donations to keep going. And if they aren't managed properly, then guess what? You know, all at the um, funders, you see my Spanish came out right there. <laughs> That's funders okay. Are not, <laughs> funders are not going to give them the money. And if that happens, right. they can continue to serve their community. Um, so, yes, I chose nonprofits, nonprofits on my niche because I believe that helping them manage their fina finances and structure and build a strong financial foundation is my is is my contribution right right to to right. what they're doing to what they're doing and it's my way to of, of giving back and making sure these organizations have their finances in order so they can continue to get the funding that they need to survive and continue their work yeah that's, that's awesome yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe what's what's some of the if if you're going to start a nonprofit or if you have one right now and you're you're still building it up, you're not at the point that you're really able to help. What are what are some uh, things we need to look at financially to make sure that we have that good solid foundation so we can keep building so we can keep serving our communities? Yes. Well, to build found or incorporate a nonprofit, the legal side of it, of course, you will need to register, file it, right, and get the EIN. Um, what else? The the uh, When you incorporate it, you have to go through different agencies in your state, and each state is different. Okay. Right? So there comes different agencies um, with different requirements within your state. So you will have to go to um, the agency that you can incorporate and look it up and incorporate it. And from there, continue with the EIN, uh, apply for the tax extension, the 501c3. Uh, for example, um, once you get approved, you know, continue to then create the, the bylaws. That's another thing that nonprofits should create, which is the the policies and procedures of that will note the operations of the um, of the organization. Uh, so that's more of the legal side. And one of the important thing is that you can that you make sure that you have the money for this process. Okay, to t- it could take from twenty five hundred, give or take, to all the way to like five thousand, more okay. or less. And just this is a more or less uh, to really incorporate and found a nonprofit for all the legal fees and filings and all of that stuff. So make sure that you have the the money for that. Um, but before you actually um, found a nonprofit, one of the main things that you should look at is what is your mission? What is it that you're looking for um, that is going to help the community that you are in or whatever community that you are targeting, for instance? Do a research. What is your mission? What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Who is it that you're going to serve? Um, what's going to drive you? What's your drive to do that? Because right. if you just do it, it, do it for the sake of doing it, it's not going to have kind of the same meaning, to be honest. Right. You know, you need to have that drive. More often than not, not these uh, the fund founders of nonprofits found nonprofits because they have lived the experience. They have gone through that experience and they decided to found a nonprofit to help people who have gone through what they have gone through because they know what it is most of the time, not saying all the time, but most of the time. So that's their drive right there, right? So mainly that, Um, but opening a business or starting a business, you know, whether nonprofit or regular business, the the key is to start small, take baby steps, save money to make sure you have enough money to, to, for, for, for those initial stages, you know, a network is very important and beneficial, right? Whether it bring leads uh, to partnership or collaborations, it's very, very valuable, you know. And one thing to look for nowadays is an increased focus on technology and automation. That's going all around. You know, technology is like the thing right now, right? Yeah. And clients will yes, expect, yeah, clients expect consultants in my case to be tech savvy and, and offer streamlined automated solutions. And they will ask you for something today that was due yesterday. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? <laughs> because it, I've been there, done that. So yes, I recommend staying up to date with technology, always educating yourself in the new new things coming out about you know the industry and make sure that you're ready to adapt and keep learning. Right, right. Yeah, in fact, one of the new things coming out in the industry is all of your websites have to be ADA compliant. And um, you need to have them checked by someone who does that to make sure that they're compliant. Um, Or there could be fees that you're getting charged and fines and stuff. So, yeah, that was that was kind of interesting to hear that. You wouldn't think that a website would need to have that. But it is. I mean, if you stop to think about it, um, yeah, you need to make your website as user friendly as possible. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank and you for, for this honest, great information. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And to be honest, 
a, a website, the, the simpler, the better. When you have too much going on, people get lost. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Very much so. Speaking of websites, <laughs> I need to <laughs> mention our sponsor today is Scars and Stripes Coffee. Um, here we go. And um, the great thing about them is that they connect family and community and the veteran. So the coffee actually goes to veterans themselves who have been disabled somehow through the military. And it's premium coffee. I mean, it's really good. I am not a coffee drinker, but because there are a lot of coffee drinkers in my family, I've learned how to go for the best coffee. And yeah. they really do have some of the great, they've got decaf, they've got the little cups, they've got beans, they got ground, whatever you need, and however you do it. And I love it that they connect the families and the community together um, in a really unique and positive way. And uh, their their slogan is, we are stronger when we are united. Buy a bag today. <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> it is That's great. awesome. Yeah, I'm and I love my cup drinker. here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah and they have gear you know this is this is really a nice sweatshirt i've got the air conditioner on in the morning it's like we kind of forgot to, forgot to yeah. set it i don't know we must have had a power outage and everything went back to to uh the basics so this morning it was a little cold <laughs> yeah you cold <laughs> yeah yeah so it is they're comfortable and this one's <laughs> lasted a long time I'm usually pretty hard on them but this one's lasted about three years and it's still in good oh, shape wow. so nice. good quality stuff there good quality yes absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah I know you have a, a few things now too in your little goodies for people don't you yes I do I have my Hold on, I have it right here. One second. All righty. Okay. <laughs> you gotta have some cute things going on. I, I love it that, here that you're. I love it that you've gone far enough in your business now that you're doing well enough that you can offer merchandise. Because, you know, that's one of the things that entrepreneurs, if you start out having all this merchandise before you get your, your business really settled, you may find out that it's not the right merchandise right. or maybe you've changed your logo or your colors until you really get exactly. your brand established. So yeah. yeah, definitely establish your brand and what you're going for before you get all of the paraphernalia. I call it paraphernalia, but go ahead and show some of your goodies yes. that you have. And I have it here because I'm, I'm, I, I need to mail them out. <laughs> so this <laughs> is my coat bag. Oh, nice. Oh, I love those and colors too. Yes, I love my turquoise. I'm telling you, I'm in love yeah. with my turquoise. <laughs> you would love my bathroom then. It's turquoise and coral. Oh my <laughs> God, look at that. So this is my, obviously my logo and the QR code that you could get all my information there. So I have black and white. The white is in the closet, but I'm not going to go get it now because it's okay. will be here forever. <laughs> and then I have my pen. And oh, this nice. is, the white is kind of metallic white and it looks really nice to be honest. Good, and good. then I have how does it write book. that's my most important thing when I see these pens some of them are like man they run out of ink before I get out of the parking lot if I'm at an event but how does it write no it writes really nice and I like ballpoint they, oh yeah me personally I like ballpoint and it's black I couldn't get blue I'm a blue person <laughs> yeah but black but it writes really nice to be honest oh good um, good and then I have my bookmarks oh nice Nice. So yes, financial management services you can trust. That's my tagline. And each um in the back, each uh bookmark has a an affirmation affirmation. Oh nice. that I wrote. Yes. Each one and then of course the QR code so that you can connect with me. <laughs> good, and I good. love it. And of course, turquoise. Blue. Yeah, the turquoise. <laughs> I've never yeah. known anyone who loves turquoise as much as I do. I love this. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm in love. I'm in love with turquoise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's great. I'm so glad you're doing well. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, wow, she's doing well. Everything's been nice and easy. But I know it's not easy having no. your own business. Um, just kind of a quick over glance. What are some of the struggles that you've had in establishing your own business? You know, getting started once you've got started, keeping it going, because sometimes that's a harder part. You know, yeah. it's tough to get started, but keeping it going and going. What are yeah. some things that you've had to go through and, and how did you um how did you 
look at, they're not failures, but how did you look at those things that were a real struggle and learn from them? Yes. Yeah, so looking at failure is, is, is I, I struggled with that at the beginning and I needed yeah. to really take them, take those as opportunities to learning and learning curves. What can I take from this so I don't do it again? Right. right. And I did struggle with that because me with my OCD <laughs> character and being so perfectionist, um, I need to really adjust that, right? And take okay. those, because it is life. You're not going to go in on at all. You will have failures. You will have roadblocks, you know, and you will have challenges. The thing is, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to continue right. trap, you know, uh, kicking um, your leg in that same roadblock or are you going to go over it and learn from it and continue moving right okay. but yeah. my journey has been nothing short of a roller coaster um, mm -hmm. it makes up challenges but also blessings and as a single mom balancing between growing my business while still having a nine to five and being a present mom I oh, really wow. have to juggle a lot um, and mm -hmm. at first I started my business as a side hustle. I have my full-time job. It was like a secondary thing. But when I decided to really go for it fully, that's when things started because now okay. I'm more focused on growing, um, get, getting things structured in the back end, right? Plus right. the client work, which continues as you structuring, that continues because they're not going to wait, right? It's a matter of, you know, a lot of planning, a lot of keeping track, a lot of dividing my time, putting everything in my calendar because it's not, if it's not in my calendar, it's just not happening. Yep. I hear <laughs> you. Yes. <laughs> my calendar is my best friend, to be honest. <laughs> but coming out, to cup it off, coming out of a toxic relationship, um, narcissistic relationship, I have to also deal with rebuilding myself from the ground up emotionally mentally and somewhat financially as well um but but I did it we did it me and my son I relocated to a new state I started fresh with my son and even though it had it's it's hard because you have to push through like I said the challenges the doubts your mind playing tricks that did I do the right move did I really yeah. like did I mess up oh, I should have just stayed <laughs> back there all of that right right that bad because it's life it's all part of life right but despite of all of that I've been able to push through and build something better for us and I'm proud of how far I come because right now in the time that I've been here now in, in the Carolinas it's been only two years and in two years my business has grown up greatly I have met so many amazing people you included you included LS and not because I'm talking to you but you included um I have become a best-selling author award-winning author and speaker I'm in the works of writing my own book I'm now a speaker as well and I've been invited to speak in different platforms so it's been really really rewarding the point is not to um just to keep pushing, like right. not to give up, you know, because like I said, you are going to have challenges. You are going to have to have your doubts. You're going to have setbacks, but it is all part of it. It's what you're going to do with it, what you do with it. That's, that's the key right there. So, Beans, you're talking about being an award-winning author, and we both seem to have this red thing behind us. I know. <laughs> so, so there's our award for this yeah. book called Born to Risk. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Yes. Now you've got your award and I've got the book. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the name of your chapter offhand? Um, Courage and Faith, Chapter yeah. 3. Absolutely. Yeah. You got one of the prime spots, chapter three. That's great. I love it. Yeah. 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 And then chapter eight, this risky business called life. Um, yes. Yeah. This was an amazing project, an amazing experience. Yeah. To be part of it's, this, this project. It was awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with that, you know, and, and there's another example. There were things through this book that just in the process of getting it written that weren't going right, it should have been done, you know, way earlier before it actually got completed. But that's one of those things you just have to wait. And maybe it wasn't the right time. Maybe um, there were things that uh, ended up being better because other things weren't working. And so, yes, it can be frustrating. It's like, well, I paid for this book a year ago. Why isn't it out yet? You know, and, and yeah. those kind of things. Um, but it's one of those, those things that you do is like good things come to those who wait. You know, there's yeah. a, a time and a purpose for everything. There's a season yeah. for everything. And um, so for those who are writing a book and it seems like it's taking forever, or it's not going right. Just remember, there's there's probably a reason that it's not going on schedule like you thought it would. And everything takes time. Um, Absolutely. If it's if it's really frustrating and and the person you're working with isn't doing their job, that's another thing to think about. But you know, give it a chance, give it a chance to go through. I know when Absolutely. I do my, my giving book, I have a tentative date of when it should be ready, when everybody should have all of their, their um, contributions for the book to me, because it's not just writing, it's artwork, it's um, memoirs, um, poetry, mm -hmm. it's it's how to, one time it was how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, all kinds of different things that are in there, laughter and whatnot. Um, but because I want the, the quality of the book there, I need to take time to do it when my very first volume. Um, mm -hmm. And and I don't want to take away from what you're saying, but I just kind of want to build upon what you're saying. The very first volume, I said, I have to have 100 pages. So until I get 100 pages, we just can't go to print. Same thing with the second one. The third one, it just, it came pretty easy. Um, this one, it seems to be flowing really well. In fact, everybody's like, well, is it ready yet? Have you done it? It's like, no, we've got, I actually moved it to the end of September to get everything in. But this is another one of those nonprofit, like what you're talking about. This is giving back to the world. I don't charge people to be in this book. If you've got some quality to put in there, get a hold of me. We can put it in the book. And then everything from all the profit from Amazon and from the books that I personally sell all go to a nonprofit. Um, mm -hmm. So everything about this book is giving. And, and I understand what you're saying about you have to get things established right up front yeah. to start your nonprofit. I'm starting nonprofit. You're helping me with it. I know it's going really slow because it needs to be done right. You can't just Absolutely. throw it in. Oh, I want to do this, this, and this. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there whether it's ready or not. You can't do that, especially with a nonprofit. You need to get Absolutely. it well established and, and going. Um, and um, yeah, so... So you've gotten established, you've had, you know, the failures we were talking about that going through. Um, what's the future look like for you? You know, in the world of finance, everybody's always going to have that because, you know, we're all here to, to get money, which is a byproduct of what we do, but we use that to um, take care of the things that we need. I mean, if if we could pick leaves off a tree and pay for things, you know, we'd be all be growing trees. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But, yes, but yes. there is a future in finances and we have to be prepared for it. So what are what are some things we can look forward to? Well, finances and money is always going to be a thing, no matter yeah. no matter <laughs> what, because it's always going to be a thing. As for me and my business, um obviously continue to help those nonprofits. Um, yes. my clients are nonprofits and the financial planning for individuals, because there's a lot of people, millions of people that are in debt out there and to be able to help them structure their budget, their money, and all of that to make the best out of the income and come out of that systematically and grow an emergency fund, grow, be able to put for their retirement and all of that, you know, that's very important. Um, I'm looking to right now, I'm working on another and different projects to kind of diversify 
BCS being that I have evolved, it's growing. I don't, BCS will always be BCS. Um, I'm providing financial management for nonprofits. Um, like I said, financial planning for individuals. I'm also doing workshops. I already did one at the beginning of like a week ago or something like that, the 12th. I okay. did one and doing another one next month on the 8th of October. Um, so that's one of the things, additional things that I'm working on um, now that I'm a speaker, <laughs> <laughs> uh, providing these workshops. But the workshops are more targeted to um, women who have been victim of an abusive relationship and how okay. that affects your mindset and how that affects your finances, which a lot of people don't put two and two, two those two together. Right. How can right. also affect your finances. So that's my workshop. Um, I'm gonna be doing um creating my YouTube video with tips um in regards to financial management, um, nice. as well as the workshop, which is Rise and Thrive. That's the the main name, Rise and Thrive um workshop. But in regards to um, financials, oh my God, we need to really try to keep up with the world because everything is evolving so fast. Everything is changing so fast. There's always a new rule, a new procedure, a new, a new thing coming out there. It's, it's not only about finances. It's, it's everything in general, just keeping up, to staying up to date. Right. And so we don't fall behind because then we will become... Asian, <laughs> yeah. if, you, yeah. if you don't keep up, it's just a matter to continue pushing and learning and always growing, looking for that, looking to always grow and learn. That's yeah. that's kind of the, the thing right now. I find your workshops intriguing. So if I was to sign up for your workshop, what would be some of the things I could look forward to in it? Yes, absolutely. So my workshop is, like I said, start it's more it's targeting those women, um, actually men as well, because there are narcissistic women. <laughs> yeah. That are happy yeah. as men. Yes. Um, so there I cover very deeply in regard of the signs, I cover the signs of a narcissist, the reflex, the character traits, how that affects you. I tie that I, I tie them up as to this got to try how that does affect your mind, how it affects your, your finances, right? All right. of that, because like I said before, people don't, most people don't really um, put, put two and two together and overlook how being in a narcissistic abusive relationship, how it affects your finances. Um, right. It does affect it very greatly, right? Um, because that's one of the things that we target to be able to control you. Right. Right. Um, so like I said, the the uh, red flags, uh, character traits, um, the behaviors, how that affects your mind, how it affects your finances, your decisions, your emotions and all that. But I also give you how what did I do to come out of it, of which, of course, was not easy when you were living in fear and people looking from outside may judge like, well, was she still there? I should have just right. left. Like, you don't know what's going on in there that like you really don't know. Um, but what did I do? What can you do to come out? What to look for so you don't fall in, in, in it, right? If you are right. dating one, how could you, like you can come out rather early than later. If you're in there, what can you actually do to prep yourself to come out? Right, right. right. And all of those things. And it's very powerful, uh, empowering. It's very, it's also a lot of information and it's engaging. It's very, very good. The last one, it was great. Um, and that's why I'm doing it again um, on October 8th. And I really invite anyone who's listening and interested. I'm looking also to do it on a monthly basis. Um, so I might do another one in either in November or December. Okay. Well, it's going to be very empowering, very, very uh, beneficial so that you be aware and know what to look for. Yeah, um, and that'd be really good, them. especially with the holidays, because so much is going on there and you've got all the finances and you don't want to overspend. Um, one of the things that years ago, back in, in my ancient dinosaur days, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
this magazine came in the mail. I don't even know why it came. It wasn't like it was something that came every month or anything, but it was a focus on the family magazine. And in it, the article was about um, about divorce and what to do. And in it, it said one of the most common things that women do is go back into that situation because they don't have the money. They don't know what to do. Um, they're yeah. scared that they're not going to be able to make it on their own. And it really stressed that if you're in a situation, yes, you need to get out, but you need to realize it's going to be tough financially for a while yeah. until you get that taken care of. Absolutely. And I thought that was a real eye opener. And I'm glad that you talk about that in, in your uh, webinar. Now, um, while I'm thinking, of, are these webinars online or are they in person? They are right on, on online. Yes, okay. Online, okay, good. Good. Virtual, yes. Yeah, so anyone can attend from anywhere. Um, Alrighty, great. Yes. And and actually, that's why one of the things that saved me because of my understanding of money and how I am always been since my preteen years that I, I actually have my first bank account when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I was already managing my money. So because of my relationship and understanding of money management and budgeting and all of that was the reason why I didn't go broke right, or under red because of that. But I yeah. did have to juggle a lot of my budget to be able to pay for his expenses and mine yeah. at yeah. the same time. Um, yeah. But yes, it did affect me still. Absolutely, because I could have had more. Um, but like I said, that's what saved me, my understanding of, of money management. But not, a, not yeah. everyone has that, that no, luck no. to say it like that. And that's what prompted me to create these workshops and help those who are going through it or have gone through it that still feel stuck, right? How, right. how can you come out? How can you rebuild yourself? Because you deserve a healthy life, mentally, emotionally, and financially as well. So absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, because there's there's so much that's going on that you don't realize how many layers you're going to have to peel off as you're going through yes. the process. And then after Ooh. you're out and you're in a safe place and, and you're going on, you know, maybe five, 10 years later, you still have more layers you're peeling off, but it's okay. That's good because you're growing and you're maturing and you're understanding more. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really a good thing. It's a good thing. So how do people get a hold of you to uh, sign up for you, one of your webinars? You've got one coming up in October, I believe you said. Yes, October 8th, which is a Tuesday at 7 p.m. EST. I have one. Um, I You can find the information. I don't know if I can give you the link that you can put somewhere um so that people can register but yeah, yeah. um in the meantime you can definitely find me in facebook on facebook which is i go by jada and ortiz the same way it appears on the screen jada and ortiz you can find me there you can dm me and then i could give you all the information that they need that you need and answer questions and provide you with the link to to register um and to um for BCS, you can visit my website, which is bookkeepingcs.com. Um, if anything that you need, you can also find it on my website. And like I said, you can always DM me. And, and okay. that's like the best way, going to my Facebook and DM me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good that, that they can do that. Wow, that's really great. So do you have like, um, for right now, let's say somebody's, just not quite making it paycheck to paycheck. What are some maybe tips you can help them figure out what to do to see if maybe they're not, they're, they need to learn how to steward their finances in a different way. I'm not going to say better or worse or anything, but differently mm -hmm. than what they're doing so that they can get a little further ahead. Yes. Uh, the first thing I will say to people is to write it down because some people, once they write it down, they have it on their in front of them, that's when they realize, oh shoot, that's where my money's going. Yeah. Right. Cause yeah. you sometimes don't remember or keep really track of what where you spending your money. 
Right. So really lay it down, right? All of your income, put it there, draw it down, sum it up, and your expenses. Every little thing counts. Don't leave anything out. From rent mm -hmm. to car payments to loans to subscriptions, which is the, one of the biggest ones, people paying for, for oh, subscriptions that they're not even using, okay. right? The gas money, everything, everything, lay it down. And from there, you can start picking and choosing what can you downgrade if it's something that you really need or what can you eliminate what can you adjust you and put down those me. coffees you're buying at the drive through coffee exactly place. that you can order up. from scores and stripes instead then you know where your money's at <laughs> <laughs> was that a good plug <laughs> that's a good one um start adjusting if you're eating out then yeah look, minimize that cook Cook and take lunch for, for for work. Do a lot of meal prep, right? Instead of going to the movies, have a movie night at home. Like all those little adjustments really help and and mm -hmm. because they really add up. And that yeah. I think that will be the, the best start to draw it out down, put it in front of your face and trying to okay, then start planning strategically. Right. What can you minimize? What can you take out? What can you do to not having to spend so much in lunch, food, breakfast, or whatever? That coffee from the corner store, make it at home, take it with you. You know what I mean? So all of those things, um, I think that that's a good start right there. Okay, good, good. Yeah, that's that's really a good start. Um, yeah, it's surprising and because that's an exercise I did you know, a long time ago is is writing everything down and it can surprise you mm -hmm. how much is going out to other things by the way i have discovered and i saw this on a television show i love watching cooking shows and and on there they were talking about you save so much money by cooking your own food at home and it's like yeah. how can you do that especially with prices now you definitely save and and it's because you're buying these really good healthy foods i mean you're you're buying if you're making a stew you've got your carrots your potatoes all of this but you're kind of buying in bulk you don't have to buy bulk but just you know you're not just buying one thing at a time and mm -hmm. um even if you count in the power uh for running your dishwasher your stove all the uh tools you're going to use you know whether it's a mixer or whatever um soap for running dishwasher if you add all of those things in you're still saving more money than it would be if you're eating out and then eating out becomes becomes a fun thing because you only do it once in a while and it becomes a real treat and it saves a lot on your body i mean it's so much healthier to to know what you're putting into your body and absolutely and going on that part, stay away from processed foods because there's things in there that help you have no energy, make you feel sluggish. You don't really want to mm -hmm. do stuff, which is, is just mm -hmm. starts a really bad cycle. Um, and that's for another episode <laughs> for, for someone who does <laughs> yes. health. But it does save. I, I am really surprised at how much it does save cooking your own food. Absolutely, it really does because it gives you, you know, when you cook, you you eat for a few days. You have for a few days, right? And yeah, again, when yeah. you go to the supermarket, you really should be looking at those. What is it that you're getting for your money? Right. But I right. in bulk, like you said, but but also compare. I I like to I be with my calculator. Okay, how many this divided yep. by the ounces? How am I getting? <laughs> how much I'm getting back? Okay, so. This in this case, the bulk is not worth it. Let me buy it individually. Yeah, so, like really do the homework, use those coupons, yeah. you go for those sales. Um, yes, yeah. buying in bulk helps a lot, but not always. So, really look out for right. that, right? <laughs> and and once you do this, then it becomes you become really accustomed to it, you automatically know. So you know, the first few times you're going to do it, it's going to like, man, I spent four hours at the grocery store. I'm exaggerating here. <laughs> um, no. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but you spend more time because you're just doing it for the first few times. Then yeah. after that, you're going to have it down and you're going to find your time at the grocery store is less because you've already 
gone through the process of knowing what's right, what to look for, how to mm -hmm. read the signs, you know, and, and what you're getting, you know, organic versus whatever. And part of that, you have to go with flavor, you know, organic bananas versus the other bananas. The other bananas may be cheaper, but you're going to get really great flavors on this. So you're going to want to eat your food, you know, so you kind of have to weigh those things in too. Um, just because you're buying the lowest price doesn't mean you're getting the best quality out of that. That's right. Um, That's right. And, yes. and that makes and a difference because if you're not feeling that you're being fed, you're going to eat tons more of it yes. instead of instead of having a good quality product that's like, wow, that was really good. A hamburger. A lot of people go for the really cheap stuff. Well, you cook that. You've cooked half of it out. Exactly. So, yes. You know, so <laughs> you only have half of what you bought. So you paid yeah. for a lot of water, filler, whatever you want to call it. So you go for the higher quality hamburger that's maybe 93% um, or 97% and only has 3% fat. But when you make that burger, it's going to stay the size you made it. And you can always add other things to your burger too, just to make it expand. Uh, but like I said, that's that's another show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, but it's, it's still true. part of saving Absolutely. Yeah. And going yeah. with a list, that also helps. Go with a list and buy what's yeah. on the list. Don't go, oh, out yes. of, don't go out of there. Don't go into the supermarket wondering, oh, what do I need? No, write it down, yeah. make a list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you forget what's on your list or you forget yeah. to write down on it. It's okay. You'll get it the next time, you know, but, but don't grab those extras that are on the shelf because that's when it really starts adding up. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and I definitely know if I go in with my list, I get what's on the list, I come home, it's like, cool. If I give the list to a family member, I'm going to say all these other things get added onto it, and they come home, and it's like, you're only supposed to get like five things. What are these 20 bags you're carrying? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So, Another thing, and people, my, some people might know uh, some of it may new to others, but do not go grocery shopping hungry. Absolutely. Do not go grocery shopping hungry because yeah. that's the worst feeling. You really buy everything will look good. You're going to yeah. want to buy everything. And, and guess like, what? Oh, yeah, I need not, that. Yeah. You're going to grab it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the other thing, too, if you go when you're hungry, your energy starts dropping down. And then it's like, oh, I just don't want to do this. I'm just going to grab a couple of things and go. And then now you've doubled your payment out because now you're going to have to go back to the store to get the things you really needed. So, yeah, there's a, there's a double edge on that. That sword, yeah. shall we say, of going when you're hungry. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Yada, thank you so much for being here. I Oh, gosh, you gave us such great information and um, they can find you on, on Facebook, going to your website. What's your website again? Yes, my website is bookkeepingcs.com. Okay. Bookkeepingcs.com. Great, great. Thank you for being here. And thank you, Scars and Stripes, specifically Sean. Um, what's your last name, Sean? I'll think of it here in a minute. Ram. And it's Sean, S-E-A-N. Ram R A M M because it does go to specific vets. So you need to say who it's for at Scars and Stripes Coffee for sponsoring this episode. And thank you, Yana. It's always my pleasure to have you on my show. You're just such a wonderful person and you care so much about everyone. And I just wish you the best in all that you're doing. And I look, I'm actually going to come to your webinar. That just sounds really interesting. I'd like oh, yeah. to yeah, like yeah, to be a sure. part of that. <laughs> okay, October 8th. <laughs> yes. All right, well, we'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for being here on Wisdom on the Front Porch, where Thank you your so front much, porch Laura. is wherever you gain wisdom and knowledge. It can be a digital cafe. It can be a Zoom call like this. It can be watching a podcast or something like that. But thank you, Yada. I really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you, likewise. Thank you so much, Ella. Thank you for joining us today on Wisdom on the Front Porch with your host, Ellis Kirkpatrick. You can find us on our website, wisdomonthefrontporch.com, see previous episodes of the podcast, and view issues of the magazine. Did you know you can submit questions, leave reviews, or suggest topics? You can also tell us where your favorite front porch location is 
and what it means to you. We hope you gain value and insight from today's or previous talks. We appreciate your support for us so we can continue to provide value and expertise to you and others. Subscribe to Wisdom on the Front Porch magazine and receive a second year absolutely free. This is a limited time offer available exclusively to those who mention the name of today's podcast. Join in next week when we bring you another great insight into the world of entrepreneur culture and lifestyle. Make today a great day. Always believe that something wonderful is going to happen.